Today I want to do something just a little bit different. And normally we're in a we're uh, preaching through a series, and today we're going to just take a little break from that, an intentional break, and just take a moment to stop, step back, and refocus. Our world is so crazy. Sometimes we just need to do that. Let's just stop and refocus on God. If you have your Bible with you, would you turn to Isaiah chapter 40? And we'll be starting at verse 28. We uh, usually read from the NLT. Just if you're using an app, maybe you could choose that, uh, that translation, then you'll be right, right in step. The issue is that we're facing is that we are weary and exhausted from life in 2020 slash 2021. <laughs> it seemed like last year in 2020, all the memes, you know, those little uh, comic pictures where people have written, uh, written funny sayings, or all the memes implied if we could just get away from 2020, if we could just get beyond 2020, like even the day after 2020, everything will be better. COVID will be gone. There will be no presidential issues. Uh, the economy will be back. Our social life will be back. Everything will be better if we can just get past 2020. And for a whole year, it seemed like the focus was 2020 is crazy. We just need to get beyond it. But here we are a year and a half later, and we are still up to our necks in COVID-19. No one, I don't think, could have foreseen this. No one would have guessed that this would keep going on this long. So today, even a year and a half later, even though we supposedly know a lot more about the virus, fear is rampant about the virus. Uh, fear, uh, fear has changed people's habits. And fear is not something that's from God. <laughs> Amen. But here we are just sort of drowning in it. Many of us are feeling frustrated about masks in general. But right now, as it's back to school, we're frustrated that our kids, that there is, that our, our kids are being required to wear masks. And I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not even trying to imply one side or the other of the political spectrum. I think everyone could agree masks are frustrating. From the highest level of government to the lowest, like masks, we don't want to wear masks. It would be great if there was a world without masks. That's what I'm saying. And so the fact that they are here and they are needed, it's frustrating. And then right now in our state, I don't know if you're watching online from far away, but in our state right now, we have a brand new thing where there is a requirement about vaccinations where for many, many jobs, you no longer get the choice of, uh, the simple choice of vaccine or not. Now the choice is vaccine or your job. That, that increases the angst the, and even the anger, the frustration that many have about this. So uh, on top of just that, that feeling of, ah, I don't know, uh, there, there's fear about taking the vaccine, fear about not taking the vaccine, there, there is frustration that now I don't have a choice, that it appears that my choice is being given away or taken away. So all those things, it's, it's a frustrating, frustrating time. And even just trying to figure out what is even true, what, what's, what's true about COVID? What's true about the disease? What's, what's true about the variants? What's, what's true about how to prevent it? What, what's even true? Because it's, it's just so convoluted. If that weren't enough, we're very troubled about what's going on in Afghanistan. And especially as Christians, we feel this very keenly because we sense that this is a time when the persecution of Christians has just ratcheted up a notch. And that is scary. That's frustrating. We feel like I want to do something to help, but I am half a world away. What could I even do? So what we have been doing as a church, I can tell you this, we have been praying. Every prayer gathering, we've been praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ in Afghanistan and for just in general for the country and for what's going on there. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to make any political statements at all. That's not even in my mind. I'm just saying our world is frustrating. It is crazy. It feels out of control. We are unhappy about our economy. 
we, we went for a long time in our country where our economy actually was just booming, 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 booming. And so now it, we see these, we're frustrated. We're frustrated about the tenuousness of jobs. Uh, we're frustrated as employers that we can't get people to fill minimum wage jobs uh, because they can earn more money in other ways. And there are just many frustrating things about it. There, uh, we're, we're frustrated about house prices. If you are trying to buy a house, it is very frustrating to have them all of a sudden double. It, it is crazy. And then something I, I, have, I don't think I've really seen this much of since I was a teenager, shortages on the shelves. Like, what is that about? Uh, I remember when, when you were in college, uh, Pastor Shelley, you, your, your singing group had a song about there's a shortage of corn, there's a shortage of gas. And then, like, all the, because it was a thing back then. Well, that was a long time ago. Sorry, spoiler alert. That was a long time ago. And now we're seeing those, those shortages again on the shelves. Like, what is that about? Is, and and it wasn't just in the beginning of COVID. It's now. Uh, the, one of the more, more recent things, no bottled water on the shelves. It's just, just strange, and it's frustrating. And honestly, if we just stop, I, I would like to just admit, there is a lot to be stressed about. There is. It is frustrating. Uh, don't, don't, don't try, feel like you have to say, oh, everything's fine. Everything is not fine. It's not. Everything is not fine with our world. There's a lot to be mad about. There's a lot to be confused about. There's a lot to be stressed or anxious about. But God. Long, long ago, God spoke through a prophet named Isaiah. And he told Isaiah, these are God's words, speak comfort to my people. Wow. It's, it's another of those things that I love about God. I love everything about God. But I love that he cares about how you and I feel. Yeah. Wow. He's running the world, you know. He's got a lot on his mind. And yet he says to Isaiah, speak comfort to my people. Yeah. So I want to communicate to you today, God cares about your frustration he cares about your stress. He cares about your world. He cares about you. He loves you. He cares about you. And when Isaiah was speaking these words to the nation of Israel, that nation had really gone through it. So like the, the north three-quarters of the nation had already been captured and taken over by a foreign, uh, a foreign government, a foreign, a former, a foreign army. And the southern half, where Isaiah was, was next. They had been through so much. You talk about a crazy world. They would have said, our world is crazy. And in the midst of that, God says, speak comfort. And that's at the beginning of this chapter, but I'm going to skip down to the end, down at verse 28. And God is speaking through Isaiah to his people. So would you receive it as one of God's people? Would you receive it from God? Have you never heard? And if you have heard, have you never understood? The Lord is the short time God. Oh wait, is that what it says? The Lord is the everlasting God. The creator of parts of the earth. Is that what it says? The creator of all the earth. He occasionally grows weak or weary. Is that what it says? No. The Lord never grows weak or weary. Praise his holy name. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. Just stop there. And when you're tempted to think, does God even get what's going on? Yes. He does get it. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak. This is for somebody today. He gives strength to the powerless. Do you feel powerless? God gives you strength. That is his promise to you today. Even youths, a category in which I am no longer a part, <laughs> even youths will become weak and tired, 
and young men will fall in exhaustion. But, somebody say but. But. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. That is God's promise to his people. Are you one of God's people? Then I recommend that you claim that promise for yourself. Now, in, that, uh, in this translation, it says in verse 31, those who trust in the Lord. I looked at this, this phrase, actually this whole passage, in several different translations of the Bible. Uh, sometimes that word is translated hope in the Lord, those who hope in the Lord. Sometimes it's, it's said those who wait for the Lord, those who wait upon the Lord. And this phrase means to put your hope, trust, your expectation in a person, in someone, especially as pertains to your future. So he is saying, Isaiah is saying, and God is saying through Isaiah, those who put your hope, your expectation, your, your trust in the Lord for your future, you're going to soar. You're going you're gonna to run and not grow weary. You're going to walk and not faint because God has already taken you into your future. This, this phrase, this command, it's an active one. It's an active word. It's not just like you're just sitting there twiddling your thumbs, hoping something good happens. It's different than that. It is leaning in. It is trusting in the Lord. It is expecting him to move. It's watching for him to move. It's watching for what he is doing in the, even in the midst of chaos at times. It's trusting in you, God, in the Lord. And it, it, it implies that you're doing something. And your hope is not built on emotions. Your hope is built on a person, our Abba Father, the Lord, the creator of all the earth. That's who it's built on. So it is, it is believing with a firm expectation that God is good. good. It's believing that, yes, and all the time, God is good. It is expecting that. It is believing and trusting that God is love and that God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. He knows you by name. He cares about you. His fingerprints are on your life. You are made in the image of God. And as we look at everybody, we see a reflection of God's creation in each person. God knows you. He loves you. He cares about you. It, trusting in the Lord is believing that his ways are higher you know how it is when you get up to, like, like here in our town, if you go up to, I, I don't know what the name of the road is, Cemetery Hills, what I think of it, you can see out over the valley, and all of a sudden your perspective changes, and you realize just how, how much traffic there is on 167. You can, you can just sort of see it at a glance. Uh, and you can see where the holdups are at every single exit. You can see the, the buildings, and you can see where there are houses, and uh, why do they choose to build houses there and not there, and, and where the farms are. You, your perspective changes, and God has a unique perspective. One of the verses I, I wanted to bring today, uh, uh, but I just didn't have room for, it, is also in Isaiah, Isaiah where God says that uh, the, the earth is like a grain of dust to him. Like the, the billions of stars are just like a little dust cloud. I picture at his belt. I don't know why, just at his belt level. Like, oh yeah, there's all the universe and the billions of stars. That's the way it is for God. And his ways are higher. And so he is working to accomplish things that you and I, we don't get it. So we could shake our fist at God and say, you're bad, you're messing things up. But we don't know his perspective. And we don't know what he's trying to accomplish in us. Uh, perhaps right now, he is bringing the end times uh, into focus. Uh, because we know from prophecies, there are some world leaders that need to arise. Well, maybe this is setting the stage for that. I don't know what he's doing. But I know he is good. I know his ways are higher. I know his ways for you, his plans for you are best. So when you trust in those things uh, about God and you trust in him and who he is, then the promise is you will soar, you will run, you will walk and not grow weary. 
That's God's promise to you. You will find new strength. If you feel weak or powerless right now, the promise is you will find new strength. And the strength does not come by focusing on what's going on in the world. The strength comes by focusing on the Lord, by waiting on him. Wait on the Lord, and he will renew your strength. He will make you soar. He will give you strength to per- persevere, strength to overcome. Got a couple of Bible verses for you here. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. In, I just give you a little context here. God was speaking through a prophet to his people, and his people were heading into 70 years of punishment. They had turned their backs on God, and God said, that is, that is enough. That is enough. And they were going into 70 years of exile. It was, it was bad. But God said, even in the midst of that, God said that you need to trust me and I'm going to still fulfill my promise over you. Verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. And God is talking about when all of this captivity comes to an end. In verse 12, he says, in those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. This is how God thinks about you. So you and I, all we can see around us is the world, the crazy world in our lives that are spinning out of control and the very difficult choices that many of us are facing right, like right now. You are facing some very difficult choices about your employment if you have strong feelings about not taking the vaccine. And this, this is, is heart-wrenching. It is, it is hard to figure out. And it is crazy. It is oppressive. And yet, this is what God says about you, even in a situation like that. Even in a time like that, I want you to know, my child, I got good plans for you. Yeah. What I want is for you to prosper in your heart. What I want is for you to prosper in your life, in your relationships. I believe even in your finances. That's what God wants for you. Wait on the Lord. Focus on him. Keep, keep, keep thinking about him, following him, listening for his voice. Wait on the Lord. And then his plans for you will be brought to pass. In uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 37 to 38, God says through, through the writer of this, uh, this, these words, despite all these things, and he's just had a list of a, just a bunch of terrible things that were happening, persecution of Christians, all kinds of stuff. And God says, no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Amen. Today, I hope you will like, let that get into your heart and into your spirit. Does this mean, does this promise mean everything is now easy? No, it does not. But it does mean that you are victorious in anything through Christ who loved you. And he goes on to to say in verse 38, same, same passage, I am convinced that nothing, 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 nothing can ever separate us from God's love. So when, when life is hard, when the decisions are hard, when you're sick with COVID or other things, or when, when things are going bad, does that mean that God doesn't love you? No. So we need to apply God's word to that situation, not apply that situation to God's word. You know what I mean? Like that situation you're going through, I'm going through, our world is going through, that does not define God. God defines God. <laughs> His word defines God. And what he said is that nothing can separate you from God's love. So even through very, very, very hard things, I want you to know God loves you. God loves you. Neither death, and that has a new meaning for us this week, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. And we're, we're praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ in Afghanistan that they will experience God's love and that, that his love will sustain them through whatever they are going through right now. 
nothing can separate you from God's love. God does not promise you a life with no valleys. That was not the promise. His promise was to walk with you through your darkest valley. That's his promise. And so we know that we're in a dark valley. And we also know that God is by our side. And we do not have to fear. The bottom line, really, of this passage in Isaiah and this message is this. When you actively trust in the Lord, your strength is renewed. When you actively trust in the Lord, your strength is renewed. When you actively trust in, wait on, hope in the Lord, your strength is renewed. That is a promise. That is a Bible promise for you. So if you came in today feeling powerless, feeling weak, feeling exhausted, feeling discouraged, stressed, angry, if you came in that way, I want to just challenge you and nudge you in this direction. Focus on the Lord. Hope in Him. Trust in Him. Think about Him. Maybe you hear these words, just wait on the Lord and you'll soar like an eagle. But right now, you might still feel exhausted or weak. But wait a minute, I am trusting in him, but I'm not soaring yet. You might feel like giving up. Not only just for individuals, but for our church, the pandemic has been frustrating. It is. We're excited about the new people that have, have come to journey with us over this, even this past year, uh, quite a number of people. But we're frustrated because it's hard to get to know people with a mask on. It's hard to even just recognize faces with a mask on, and that's frustrating. We're, we had to cancel VBS because of sickness. That, that's frustrating. That's, that's painful. We, our plans and our permitting for our facilities remodel are taking longer than they should have, longer than expected for certain. Uh, we're, uh, we've been waiting on certain things from certain people for months now, and things that formerly would not have taken months. And they're projecting our construction costs will be higher because of the pandemic and just all of the ripple effects that go along with that. It's frustrating. It is. It's not how we want it to be. And when your life is frustrating, it's tempting to, to, do, to do some things. Like, you might be tempted to give up. You just go, I'm giving up. I'm giving up on this marriage. I'm giving up on uh, this project. I, I'm giving up on having enough money. I'm giving up on this relationship. I'm giving up on feeling healthy. It's tempting to just give up when it's just so, it's just coming at you from so many directions. Another way uh, you might try to handle the, this crazy season is by going into denial. I, I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna pay attention to what's going on. I'm just gonna stay in my bubble and say, everything's all right, everything's all right, everything's all right. Bury your head in the sand. Another way people sometimes deal with frustration is to get mad, to get angry. And, and even take it out on people around you that it's not even them, they're not even making you mad, but they're just in your crosshairs. But I want you to know there's something more effective you can do. There's something more effective than those things, giving up or going in denial or taking it out on, on people around you. Four words, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. That is a better way to deal with it, to deal with everything that is coming at us right now. Uh, how do you do that? That sounds great, Pastor. Wait on the Lord, but how do I do that practically? I've got some, I've got some, su some suggestions for you. This is not an exhaustive list, but the cool thing is they all start with R. The first one is remember. Remember how God has pulled you through in the past. And that is such a faith-building thing. Don't take that lightly. Remember how God answered your prayer. Remember how God made a way for you when it seemed like there was no way. Remember how he brought a solution when it seemed like there was no solution. You're ready to give up, and yet God brought a solution. Journal it. Write it down. Repeat it. Tell somebody about it. Say it out loud. Sing it in a little song. Lord, thank you for when you provided that for me. Like, think about it. Rehearse in your mind that God has done it before. He has taken you through tough times, and he can surely do it again. A second idea. Renew your mind. Renew your mind. You guys, we have got to do this. 
I have found myself several times over the past year and a half going over and over in my mind all the losses all the losses oh yes and we lost this and I lost that and we lost this and we lost that I, I think you have so many losses and I, I have found myself in a time just in a uh, for many times in a spiral of just all I can think about is losses 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 and how much uh, I, I wish those losses didn't happen and how, how I wish it could have been different and, and and the thing is that does not help and it takes our focus off the Lord so how do you renew your mind fill your mind up with God's Word. I have quoted a few scriptures today. I hope, I hope you're taking notes or you go back and watch, watch the broadcast later and get those scriptures and memorize them. Speak them out. Pray them. I find it's very, very powerful to pray God's Word. But you got to know God's Word to do that. Put it on a post-it and put it on your bathroom mirror or on your car dashboard or your desk at work or whatever where you're going to see it renew your mind. I hope that you're reading the Bible plan or that you at least have your own Bible reading plan. This year, we've been going through this book. This is a devotional book, Prevail. And I just even love that encouraging title, Prevail. Uh, and I just want to encourage you to read God's Word. And because you can't really, uh, at one chapter a day, you can't get to the whole Bible, uh, the author has just selected some, some key chapters in every single book of the whole Bible. We're going to get through a, a kind of an overview of the whole Bible. And this past week, we read the story of a guy who had been praying and praying and praying and praying for a long time. He was a priest, a Jewish priest named Zechariah. And he and his wife Elizabeth now were very elderly and they just, he had been praying and praying for decades for a son. And I'm guessing he gave up. He's like, well, I guess it is now too late. I'm giving up on this prayer. And that's when an angel of the Lord appears to him, Gabriel, and says, hey, God's heard your prayer. What? Here I've been saying bad things. I've been thinking thoughts about God. God doesn't answer my prayer. And God said, no, I heard your prayer. And now the time is right. And I'm not going to just give you a son. I'm going to give you John the Baptist. And he's going, to, he's going to prepare the way for Jesus to come. God needed in his timing for the time to be right for Jesus, for the time to be right for John. The answer to Zechariah's prayer. And I, I just bring that up just because it's an example of someone who had waited on the Lord. And God did come through with him. And I found that because I read God's word. And I filled up my mind with that. So a third suggestion. Listen. Sometimes just replace the news with a worship song. You don't have to, you don't have to read or watch the news or listen to the news 24-7. You don't have to. Turn off CNN. Turn off Fox News. Oh, there I said it. Both ends of the spectrum. Turn it off occasionally and just put on a worship song. Just put on a worship song instead. I'm not saying to bury your head in the sand, but don't just baptize yourself in the news. Uh, in the fall of 2020, there's a worship song that just, it got me through that time. You hold it all together. There's just a song that just declared, God, you, my future's in your hands, my presence in your hands, you're the Alpha and the Omega. And I listen to it every single day, a few times a day, until my spirit was filled with, you hold it all together, Lord. That is a great way to wait on the Lord. And the last one is reach out to God in prayer. Reach out to God in prayer. Reach out to God in prayer. I, I, I'm sure you're praying on your own. And when you're, you know, you're feeling frustrated, I hope you're just taking that to God in prayer. But also gather together in prayer. We are a praying church. We always pray. And we have a couple of prayer gatherings every single week, Wednesday night and Sunday morning. Every single night or every single week we pray. Even when our, we were... Um, distancing because of COVID, we prayed online with Zoom meetings. We have prayed every Wednesday and Sunday morning. Come and call out to God in prayer with somebody and you will be encouraged. Together Nights is going to be another opportunity for prayer where not only that you would get prayed for, but you could pray for someone else. Maybe you're a mature believer and you could pray for somebody else. That's going to happen at Together Nights. And all of these things are things that we do to wait on the Lord. That's how you wait on the Lord. And when you actively trust in, hope in, wait on the Lord, He 
will renew your strength. He will. Would you stand to your feet? We're not done yet, but I just want us to sing a simple worship song together. And we're going to sing and, and, uh, and just declare this passage in song together. A very simple song, just a few lines. Let's sing. Let's worship with it. in the Lord. Would you just raise your hand, whether you're in the room or online, if you've been feeling stress or worry or confusion or exhaustion or powerlessness or weakness or the desire to give up, if you've been in denial, if you've been angry, if you're feeling some of those things, which is actually pretty common uh, in our world right now, and I see many, many hands up. And we've just got our hands raised to God in prayer. Lord, we give it to you. We give our individual situations to you. We give you our job. We give you the vaccination choice. We give you the mask situation. We give you the economy. We give you our desire to buy a house. We give you everything, Lord God. We give you our worry and concern for Afghanistan and the people there. Lord, we give it to you. We release it to you. We lay it at your feet. And Lord, with each of those things, Lord, we say we trust in you for that. We hope in you for that. We wait on you for that. And we give it all to you today, Lord, knowing that you are good, you are love, and you are everything that we need. We praise you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. And I just want to declare over your life, church, everyone who's, who's, who is just gathered right now, I want to declare over you, you are loved by God you are. Would you receive that? Would you take that into your heart? Would you take the walls down and just receive that you are loved by God? Even when it's hard, 
even when it does not make sense, you are loved by God. Overwhelming victory is yours in Christ Jesus. Overwhelming victory is yours. And, and I think it would be super cool if you raise both hands in a victory. Uh, like a, maybe it's a, a V sign or a, just a hand raised to God sign. But to raise your hands and just say, I am victorious in God. Overwhelming victory is yours. It's the scripture I read earlier. I speak over you. You are not a victim. You are an overcomer. That agrees with God's word. You are not a victim. That does not define you. You are an overcomer through God. I, I just speak over you. When you pray, God listens. You, you, it doesn't matter. It's not based on your holiness. It's based on God's choice. And God chooses to listen to you. When you pray, God listens. These, by the way, all of these declarations are from the Word of God I read uh, to you today. God has all the answers you are looking for, all of them. God knows what you should do. God knows the best choice for you to make. God has all the answers because his understanding is immeasurable. No one can measure it. God's plans for you are great. And I just speak over you. His God's plans are to prosper you. I'm not talking about getting rich in this world's goods, although if God wants to do that, awesome, please tithe. But I'm talking about prosperity in your soul, prosperity in your relationships, prosperity in your mind, prospering you. That is God's plan for you. As you actively wait on the Lord, your strength is being renewed. I declare that over you. God is empowered empowering you to face whatever comes your way. God is enabling you to soar as you wait on him. God is enabling you to run and not grow weary. God is enabling you to walk and not faint. I speak it over you. I declare that over you. And it's not because of my power of positivity. It's because I'm agreeing with God's word. That's where I got every one of those declarations. I'm agreeing with God's word over you. One more invitation today. And I don't know where you're at spiritually. Everyone's on a journey, either moving closer to God or further. I want to invite you, if you never have before, to put your faith in Jesus as your Savior. As I look around this room, I know many of you have, so I just invite you to pray with me for others who are joining in online. And if you've never put your faith in Jesus, I invite you to do that. Turn from your sin, turn your life over to God, and let Jesus lead your life and you will begin to experience this peace that we're talking about today. Would you pray with me? And if you today are, are putting your faith in Jesus, I invite you to just to pray this prayer after me. And church, would you help us out and just, uh, just uh, uh, repeat with me? Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and let you lead, and I'll wait on you. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that prayer today, why don't you just let me know by sending a text to the phone number we've been talking about today, but text the word RESTART, and uh, give me enough contact info. We can get back to you. I want to give you some next steps. It's not enough just to begin with the Lord. I want you to finish with the Lord, too. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Garen. What a great message. You know, my biggest takeaway from that, God cares about us. And isn't it so great to worship a God who actually cares about us and wants to have that relationship with us? Praise the Lord. I'm so, I feel so blessed. Well, um, if you're new with us, once again, I just want to encourage you, text that GREET, G-R-E-E-T, -E to 97000, and we'll connect with you. If you're joining us on the stream today, would you just hit that subscribe button? That helps us get the word out of the good news of Jesus Christ. It was so good to see you all this week, and I look forward to seeing you next week. And if you didn't come in person, come next week. God bless you, if you can. <laughs>